Hope you can all appreciate the irony of a lump like me wearing an X-Men Athletics t-shirt. X-Men Origins Wolverine. <sighs> Directed by Gavin Hood and released in this year. I didn't write it down. Starring Hugh Jackman, Liv Schreiber, Lynn Collins and Danny Houston. And a whole bunch of others, but seriously, just go check the IMDb page, okay? With a production budget of $150 million, a worldwide taking of $373 million for a profit, profit, puh, for a profit of $223 million. Not sure where the money went, but it probably wasn't the CGI. Okay, let's start with the good. The good is like the first act. It's pretty damn solid. You get some really nice backstory to Wolverine and Sabretooth, that's very cool. You meet some funky mutants, not yet Deadpool, not Fat Blob, Wraith, Bolt. Zero, don't know who that is, but he's kind of cool. First act, really solid start, really solid entry, gives you all you want about Wolverine. The rest of the movie, not so much. Kind of falters, staggers along, falls flat on his face. Uh, there are some really cool moments in the rest of the film, followed by some truly crappy choices. Why do I have a lot of notes on this? Primarily amongst the jump out crappy bits, is the CGI. Wolverine's flippin' claws keep changing. They look real, they look super fake. They look streamlined and thin and to character. Or they look like frickin' machetes. A little bit of research, they kept changing CGI companies. They had many people on contract doing the same thing at the same time and no one was sharing notes apparently. Quality control was out having a cigarette. I, I just don't know what happened. The act two and three. The key point where the movie falls over is when Wolverine runs away from the facility and ends up at this farmhouse. And you got this sequence that meant to be the nice humanizing moment where he reconnects with his humanity and meets some nice elderly people. It is so rushed. They pretty much adopt him in 10 seconds. He's gone from random naked dude hiding in their barn to adopted son they never had. And then tragic loss of both adopted parents. And what? had to be less than 10 minutes. Stretch that sequence out for the whole second act would have been better than jamming all the other crap in the middle there. This mutant and that mutant, hell, Cyclops turning up, young as a school kid, in school, getting abducted by Sabretooth, taken by Strike and experimented on. Would have been really cool to mention that, you know, in the other movies. But, of course, you can't because you're retconning. And the retconning doesn't make any sense because I'm pretty sure that, you know, Cyclops remember the great big scary guy that kidnaps him, turning up again later in the first scene, well, main scene, of the X-Men 1 movie. And there's some really good tie-ins to the rest of the series. Really good stuff. Right next to really bad stuff that makes no damn sense. There's no reason to have it there. And Gambit! Gambit's appearance is cool until it's really not. Gambit versus Wolverine little throwdown. It's unnecessary, it's goofy, it's pointless. There's no script-based reason for those two to be fighting other than someone wanted to make it look cool and then it didn't look cool anyway. I'd say that Gambit was the most shoehorned in character, except I'd be wrong. That title was competing for the badly mismanaged mishmash Deadpool character. The fact that you have Emma Frost in the third act and she's not just a cameo, she's got lines, she's got things to do. She's actually really cool and that Cyclops they got in there He's also cool. You get this little moment, this little vision of a movie you prefer to be watching. Just for a moment. And then it's gone because bloody Charles Xavier turns up walking at the very end to save the day and rescue all these mutants. Doesn't make any sense. Why is he walking? Why is Xavier walking in this part of the film? Oh, and the way it's CGI'd in, the way they've jammed this into the world looks laughable. This looks like such a stitch job reshoot that I hope it is. I mean it's still entertaining, there's still some cool fights, but then they stretch reality, they stretch physics, they stretch the mutant powers right out. Here's one that really jumps out, okay? Wolverine gets shot in the head twice with adamantium bullets. There are holes in his adamantium skull and his brain is soup. Here's my thing, adamantium doesn't heal. He should have two bullet holes when he gets scanned in X-Men 1. He's got two weaknesses right here. Never hear about that again. Probably doesn't matter to anyone else, admittedly. Okay, fine. But to me, he's got two bullet holes. You never hear about that again. Okay, ranty tantrum is over. Let's think about it. The acting, when it was good, was great. I mean, really quite nice. 
It's just the writing and the story and the editing and the CGI and everything else about it falls hard. Really drags this down, makes a mess. On the overall scheme of things, I was originally going to put this at second from the bottom, but that would put it on the same level of The Last Stand, and The Last Stand really is a much better film. So, to the bottom with it. There's my less than happy review of X-Men Origins Wolverine. Have you seen it? Do you think it was too harsh? Do you think it was too nice? Let us know down below in the comments or the Facebook page. And as usual, have a great week, and I'll catch you later.